Hey guys, welcome back to the comic book lowdown. I'm Wellington. Today I'm going to be doing a story arc review. We're going to be going all the way back to spring of 1988 and via Amazing Spider-Man Omnibus. We're going to cover the uh, two issue story arc from issues 298 and 299 and this is the chance encounter. Uh, just give you the cover of 298. I mean, this is this is very long ago. I mean, I was far from born. <laughs> uh, my dad hadn't even moved. My parents hadn't even moved to America yet. That's how old this is. So uh, definitely, this is not from my time period at all. My time period is now. So, um, but. All in all, this story is definitely enjoyable, no matter how many times I read it. Uh, David Michelini writes a great story, writes a great uh, Peter Parker. And he, what he does in this story is that uh, he uses Peter more as a detective, really. He uses him in almost every aspect. It's almost like watching a TV show, like an episode of... Uh, the Spider-Man animated series, but targeted more to an adult audience. Uh, this this story arc is because there's a lot more adult theme in it, but it's a lot of you know it's a lot of Peter Parker, and then the Spider-Man sprinkled in just so you can see Spider-Man. But um, the story is just really good. Uh, it's not. Uh, riveting or anything like that it's not groundbreaking stuff but it's a it's a regular story it's almost another episode because it feels like I'm watching an episode of a TV show um, but anyways takes place uh, a guy named Chance a villain just I w I'd call him maybe a D-list villain because uh, I hadn't even heard of him until I first read this story this is the second time I read this um, Chant hired by, uh, he's, he's a, he's almost a job for hire. He does whatever he does for money, but, uh, what he does is instead of just getting the money up front, he bets. So if he's successful, um, he gets his pay. If he's not successful, no pay. So, but he bets his own money. He puts his own money on the line because... That's his thing. He likes to gamble. That's why they he called himself Chance. But anyways, he does this job for... He's doing just jobs for people. Uh, he actually kills a guy in this, so there's the more adult theme in there. Um, he was in jail before, so... There's a little backstory that we get that he was jailed before, but now... Um, there's also a lot of stuff going... There's For two issues... There's a lot jam-packed. A lot of Peter Parker, Mary Jane. A lot of just Peter. A lot of chance. A lot of the whole plot and scheme. A lot of uh, Daily Bugle. Just, this two issues feels like definitely three or four issues. <laughs> There's a lot to cover in it. And it's only two issues again. Uh, so, Mary Jane... I covered some of the lesser stuff, like Mary Jane and Peter. Uh, Mary Jane wants to move into some high, higher up condos and all this kind of stuff. Peter feels bad, of course, because he doesn't ha even have that money that Mary Jane has. And you know, he's got that that ego. Uh, his ego is hurt because, you know, he can't buy Mary Jane th the house that she wants. She buys it for them. And he feels like since he's the man in the house, he should do it. And so there's uh, Peter's ego gets to him a little bit. Um, but, I mean, that's what makes a really good Peter Parker story is where, you know, he, Peter Parker's just such a emotional character. Like, uh, without his emotions, you don't have as interesting of a character that Peter Parker is. Uh, and I definitely really like that. I definitely love how Michelini... Uh, emphasizes on all his all Peter's like subtle emotions about you know his ego's hurt or he's scared 
or he's just always bothered by something, he can't get something out of his mind. All this stuff happens throughout this story arc. That's why I definitely feel like um, if you can find these in issues, definitely pick them up. I've never seen them in issues, but if not, um, I don't know if they collect this in trade. So, I mean, I recommend the Omnibus just to anybody, but uh, that's a little steep. So, I don't know, maybe if you can find them in issues or not. But if not, you got my video to watch. But uh, anyway, so there's that whole uh, inner battle going on there. So Peter's looking for, you know, freelance photo uh, photography jobs. And there's some funny stuff in here with him uh, in like a in his underwear and speedo and all this kind of stuff. But um, meantime, Chance is working for this guy named. Uh, wow, I already forgot his name. I just read this. His last name is Drake. Yeah, last name Drake. And um, he's running the Life Foundation. The Life Foundation is... Uh, th this Drake guy, he's a Wall Street guy, rich guy. Uh, and, but he's very sneaky and he's very uh uh he's very swift with the way he operates his organization and he's very on the down low where there's nothing really on him besides you know what you would expect to find be with these rich people like this but he's running the life foundation which is actually sort of a terrorist group and uh what they're planning on doing is they're making a society, a uh, sort of a, uh, a society in the woods of New Jersey. That's very large and it's very luxurious, because they feel like the end of the world is coming near, and they feel like if they have this society, they can get all the rich and famous people, sell them rooms in this society, for millions of dollars just for a room to live there you know, scam these people out of their money uh, for a million dollars and uh, and then they'll be protected because they're stealing military grade weapons and that's why they hire Chance so Chance can uh, he can quarterback the operation and he can steal the he can help steal the uh, the weapons for uh, the Life Foundation so they can pr protect their uh, citizens and their new civilization. It's all kind of weird, and uh, you know, it, it's very shady. He's a very shady character. You can even tell by looking at his character. He's very skinny, long chin. Uh, McFarlane does a great job at drawing the bad guy. You know who's the bad guy, and you know who's the good guy. Uh, this guy is definitely, you can tell he's you know, smoking a cigarette, got the sunglasses at all times, sits in the big chair, all this kind of stuff makes him look like he's the boss, and he is. So, uh, you know, Spider-Man gets this emotional, uh, you know, he feels bad about himself because when Chance goes to steal the weapons, uh, things go south, and a guy almost dies, and Peter was there, he didn't intervene because he wanted to get some photos for the bugle without, you know, Spider-Man being in the photos. So, because, you know, Jameson never wants to take Peter's photos of Spider-Man, especially nowadays, in this time, I should say. So, then a days, um, Jameson was trying to get off to Spider-Man for a while. So, Peter was just trying to get some photos of Chance taking the weapons and then he could go and then get the weapons back and then he would be selling two stories so that that was his plan but his plan backfired somebody almost got killed and he feels guilty because had he intervened sooner the man wouldn't have been wounded period so you know Peter 
he takes things hard upon himself a lot. Um, and there's just some really nice moments. At the end of this first issue, though, is at the end of both issues, there's really cool things foreshadowing the next issues. Um, or, or future issues, I should say. Uh, and here, I mean, this omnibus is kind of hard to maneuver. But here's the end. This is all leading up to the first appearance of Venom. So, you gotta get really stoked for that. Especially in the time. If you had never seen Venom before, you just... I don't even know. I can't even... I can't even imagine what seeing Venom for the first time would have been like back in uh, 1988. Especially McFarlane drawing. You know you're going to get a uh, good art. Uh, so the start of the next issue, some funny stuff's happening. Spider-Man's tracing Chance with the spider tracer. Uh, he's just a whole deal with the cop and everything. It's a lot funnier to read, so I won't... Uh, I won't get into that too much, but uh, then you know, then there's just more character stuff where Peter and Mary Jane they go back and forth, and Peter's feeling as if you know he has to find these weapons or somebody can get killed by these weapons, and he worries about this all day. And um, so he actually goes pretty much detective mode, uh, he researches everything about this Drake guy. Uh, he goes to ESU, researches things there, and he finds out about the whole, uh, uh, him withdrawing money to make this civilization and all this kind of stuff. And so he investigates. In the meantime, uh, the Life Foundation has taken Chance hostage. They've, or they've taken him captive because they want to get the technology and his blasters and his wrist blasters and his uh, f uh, ankle rockets you know so they can have the upper edge over their guards who have weapons that they're giving these military weapons to because they're making an entire military in this new civilization and just along with all this is just great art I can't even like it's just so amazing how McFarlane draws. Um, the way Peter gets into the civilization is awesome. And, you know, he's in the black suit. So that even just adds more fun to it. Um, and then after that, there's just action upon action. Chance and Spider Man team up to take down the Life Foundation. And it's just a very simple story. Two issues, but, uh, it's definitely fun to watch, and it's fun to look at because, I mean, just look at this page. You just look at that page. McFarlane does a great job on the art. The bookmark came out, so got to find the page I was saving for you guys. Oh, right here, next page. Um, and then we finally get the first appearance of Venom. And it's Venom coming face to face with Mary Jane and completely creeps her out. Just scares the living hell out of her. So we get this first. You see the mouth. And then we finally get this. Fix that. Finally get that. And that's the first time we ever see Venom in uh, comic history. And so that was really it. That's a story. Uh, it's very simple, but it has a lot in it. Uh, there's detective work. There's emotional. There's funny. There's uh, worry. There's things to worry about. There's a uh, setup to future stories. There's excitement. You know, just a bunch of things come out of just two arcs or uh, two issues. And, uh, that's why I love Michelini's writing so much, because uh, he can just pack so much info into uh, into a issue, and it all just corresponds greatly. It all flows nicely, and it's a little bit of its time 
in some aspects, but other aspects it's very timeless, where you can just read them over and over again no matter what, because it's just great comics being great comics, and the McFarlane art just adds a touch to it that uh, I don't know if any other Spider-Man artist can do Spider-Man as well as McFarlane can. He's the one that made Spider-Man art the way that it is today. And, uh, that's it. <laughs> so, I'm gonna try to bring out more of these, uh, story arcs from the Amazing Spider-Man Omnibus. Just cause, you know, I bought it. I read it all already. Might as well reread it sometime. Uh, just go back to it. Read a couple issues here and there. Don't want to forget about it. It costs a lot of money. You know, I want to go back and read all my comics again because what am I investing all this money in for or in them for? I'm not going to, you know, enjoy them more than once. So that's pretty much my video and a little rant at the end. Um, I'm Wellington signing off with a comic glow down and I'll see you guys next time.